Part 1. You will hear a man, Martin Hill, phoning an estate agent in order to find some accommodation. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to three. Hello, Brindle's estate agents here. How may I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm ringing to see what flats you have for rent at the moment. Right. Can I start by just taking your name, Mr... Um... Hill. Martin Hill. Right. And are you looking for a flat for yourself or um, a family, perhaps? Well, it's for three of us. Myself and two friends. We're going to share together. I see. Um, what about employment? Are you all students? Oh, no. We've all got full-time jobs. Two of us work in the central bank. That's Chris and me. And Phil, that's the other one is working for Hallam Cars, you know, at the factory about two miles out of town. I'll put you down as young professionals then. And I suppose you'll be looking for somewhere with three bedrooms? Yeah, at least three. But actually, we'd rather have a fourth room as well, if we can afford it, for friends staying over and stuff. Is that with a living room to share, plus kitchen and bathroom? Yeah, that sounds good. But we must have a bathroom with a shower. We don't mind about having a bath, but the shower's crucial. OK. I'll just key that in. And are you interested in any particular area? Well, the city centre would be good for me and Chris, so that's our first preference. But we'd consider anything in the west suburbs as well, really. Actually, for Phil, that'd be better, but <laughs> he knows he's outnumbered. <laughs> But we aren't interested in the north or the east of the city. OK. I'm just getting up all the flats on our books. Now you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 4 to 10. Just looking at this list here, I'm afraid there are only two that might interest you. Do you want the details? OK, let me just grab a pen and some paper. Fire away. This first one I'm looking at is in Bridge Street and very close to the bus station. It's not often that flats in that area come up for rent. This one's got three bedrooms, a bathroom and kitchen, of course, and a very big living room. That sounds a good size for you. Hmm. So what about the rent? How much is it a month? The good news is that it's only £450 a month. Rents in that area usually reach up to 650 a month. But the landlord obviously wants to get a tenant quickly. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a bargain. What about transport for Phil? Well, there'll be plenty of buses, so no problem for him to use public transport. Uh, but unfortunately, there isn't a shower in the flat, and that location is likely to be noisy, of course. OK. What about the other place? Let's see. Oh, yes. Well, this one is in a really nice location, on Hills Avenue. I'm sure you know it. This looks like something a bit special. It's got four big bedrooms and, um, there's a big living room and, oh, this will be good for you, a dining room. It sounds enormous, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds great. That whole area is being developed and the flat's very modern, which I'm sure you'll like. 
It's got good facilities, including your shower. And of course, it's going to be quiet, especially compared with the other place. Better and better. But I'll bet it's expensive, especially if it's in that trendy area beside the park.、Mm, I'm afraid so. They're asking £800 a month for it. Whoa! It sounds a lot more than we can afford. Well, maybe you could get somebody else to move in too. I'll tell you what. Give me your address and I can send you all the details and photos. And you can see whether these two are worth a visit. Thanks. That would be really helpful. My address is flat five. That is the end of part one. You'll hear a telephone conversation. Now you have some time to look at questions one to six. Listen to the conversation and answer questions one to six. Good morning, Country Comfort Albury. Oh hi, I'd like some information, please. I'd like to find a double room to stay for the weekend. What kind of rooms do you have? Well, we provide a variety range of accommodation depending upon your likes. The guest house room costs forty-five dollars per night. It provides air conditioning and shower, and a waterfront room costs eighty dollars per night. It has got its own balcony overlooking the foreshore of the lake. And we've got a kid. How do you charge for children? Extra bedding is available if you require that. If the kid is aged twelve and below, the cost is ten dollars per night for the guest house room and fifteen dollars for the waterfront room. Do you have a swimming pool, tennis court, or something like that? Yes, we've got a swimming pool, which is free for all the guests. But the tennis court charges eight dollars each hour, including the rent of rackets. How about other facilities? We provide free off-street car parking and internet access. We also installed in-house movies, but that costs four dollars per hour. Oh, we don't think we need that because of the kid, you know. We don't want him to see movies on the weekend. Well, we also offer ironing equipment in the room. That's useful, I think. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to go through the questions seven to ten. Now listen to the last part of the conversation and answer questions seven to ten. Great! Could you tell me the address? How do we get there? Yes, it's Country Comfort Albury, A L B U R Y, at six hundred and forty-eight Dean Street, New South Wales. Six four eight Dean Street, D E A N. Is that right? Yes. Well, I wonder what activities are available there in this season. You know, we want to have an indulgent weekend in the boring winter. Oh, you'll not get bored here. You know, Albury is the perfect base for alpine skiing. Besides that, winter's frosty alpine air encourages walks through mist-laden valleys. You can walk alongside rushing streams and waterfalls. After returning to the warm and comfortable lounge, you can sit by the open fire. I think this is the ideal time of year to nourish your body at the Salus Spa. The idea of skiing doesn't appeal to me very much, but it sounds good to have a relaxing walk through the valleys. Maybe after that, I'll have a massage and some soaking in the spa. And you know, this hotel is perfectly located in a quiet position off the main highway in central Albury. It's within walking distance of licensed clubs, restaurants, shops, and the central business district. It's known for its excellent cuisine and warm Australian hospitality. Good. It's a good idea to taste the tasty dishes in one of the restaurants. 
My wife may be interested in shopping. She's always keen on that. I think I'll contact you later. Thank you very much. You will hear a woman being interviewed by a market researcher in a health club about her membership of the club. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Oh, excuse me. I wonder if you'd have the time to take part in some market research. Um, what's it about? About this club and your experiences and opinions about being a member. It'll take less than five minutes. Oh... OK, then, as long as it's quick. Can I start by taking your name? It's Selina Thompson. Is that T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N? Yes. OK, great. Thanks. And what do you do for a living? Well, I'm an accountant, but I'm between jobs at the moment. I understand. But that's the job I'll put down on the form. And... Would you mind my asking which age group you fall into? Below 30, 31 to 50, and above? Over 50, <laughs> I think we can safely say. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. And which type of membership do you have? Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean how long... Of... No, is it a single-person membership? Oh, right, no, it's a family membership. <laughs> thanks. And... How long have you been a member? Ooh, let me see. Uh, I was certainly here five years ago, and it was probably two to three years more than that. Mm -hmm. Shall I put down eight? Oh, I remember now. It's nine, definitely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. I've got that. And the last question in this first part is, what brought you to the club? Uh, sorry? Uh, how did you find out about the club? Did you see any ads? Well, uh, I, I did, actually. But I have to say, I wasn't really attracted to the club because of that. It was through word of mouth. So you were recommended by a friend? <laughs> actually, my doctor. Oh. I'd been suffering from high blood pressure, and he said the club was very supportive of people with that condition, so I signed up. Mm, great. Thanks. Before you hear the rest of the conversation... You have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, for the second part of the form, I want to ask a bit more about your experience of the club. Sure. Uh, how often would you say you use the club? <sighs> it varies enormously, depending on how busy I am. Mm, of course. But on average, per month? I'd say it averages out at twice a week. OK, so eight on average. Yeah, and four of those are aqua aerobics classes. That leads me to the next question. Would you say the swimming pool is the facility you make most use of? Fair to say that, yep. Right, thanks. And are there any facilities you don't use? Hmm. One area I realise I've never used is the tennis courts. Mm. And there's one simple reason for that. You don't play tennis? <laughs> Actually, I'm not bad at it. Oh. It's that I'm not happy having to pay extra for that privilege. Oh, right. I've made a note of that. Thanks. Mm. <clears throat> now, in the last section, are there any suggestions or recommendations you have for improvements to the club? 
Uh, only about health and fitness? Anything at all. Well, I'd like to see more social events. Oh. It isn't just a question of getting together for games or classes, but... Other things, you know. Yes, sure. And another thing that I was thinking when I had my yoga class in the gym last night, we were all sweltering in the heat, uh, was that I think they should put in, well, you know... Uh, Air conditioning. Uh, that's exactly what I mean. Mm. The rooms are really light and well-designed, but they do need proper installations. Sure. Well, I've made a note of that. Good. So, is there anything else you'd like to suggest? Uh, about quality of service, for example? Oh, everyone's very nice here. They couldn't be more friendly and helpful. Oh, but I tell you what, it's a shame the restaurant isn't open in the evening on Saturday. And Sunday as well, for that matter. Oh. So, the club should... Yeah, open it later on those days. OK. Well, thank you very much. That's <laughs> all the questions I have. Part 1 You will hear a conversation between a police officer and a woman who witnessed an accident. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello, madam. I understand you witnessed the accident. Have you got a few minutes to tell me what you saw? Yes, no problem. I don't have to be back at work for a while, so I'm pleased to help. Did you actually see what happened? Yes. I was standing over there, near the bus stop. I was on my way to get something for lunch and just happened to be looking at a shop across the road. That's when I saw the red car come out from the junction over there. You don't happen to know what time it occurred, do you? Well, I left work for my lunch break at one and it's only about ten minutes walk away, the office, I mean. So it might have been about ten past one. Although, I did pop into the shop for something, so it was probably closer to 1.15. So, it pulled out of Monk's Road, that's the road over there, straight on to High Street? That's right, yes. Did you get a view of who was in the car? There were three of them. Two in the front, the driver of course, someone in the passenger seat, and there was someone in the back. They were quite young. I doubt if they were much older than 20. Anyway, they came speeding out of the side road over there and hit that lady's bicycle. The driver didn't bother to stop to find out if she was OK. He just drove off along the main road towards the town centre. Uh, is the woman OK? She should be fine. She banged her head when she came off the bike, so we've called for an ambulance. They always like to check you out in case you have concussion. But no, she seems fine. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. The bike doesn't look too good, though. I don't think she'll be using that again. I suppose she was very lucky, really. If they'd hit her instead of the front wheel, she could have been seriously injured. It looked like they were just in a hurry and didn't want to stop at the junction. I know the traffic lights aren't working there, so perhaps they thought they could just pull out. Could you give me a description of the car? Do you know the make and model? Well, I'm not very good with cars, but I'm pretty sure it was the same model as my husband's car, a Ford Fiesta. It was red, like I said, and quite old. And the door on the driver's side was damaged. It looked like it had been in another accident some time ago. 
I don't suppose you had a chance to take down the registration number, did you? I did, actually. Let me see. Um, Y48BYW. Will that help you trace them? That's really helpful. It depends. It might be a stolen car, but at least we'll be able to trace the owner. If it wasn't stolen, then yes, we'll be able to find out the name of the driver. Now, would you mind giving me your contact details, just in case we need to get in touch about anything? Of course. What's your name? Mrs Stansfield. Rita Stansfield. That's S-T-A-N-S-F-I-E-L-D. And your address, Mrs Stansfield? 19 Althorpe Road, Bradford. That's A L T H. O-R-P-E. Have you got a telephone number we can get you on? Yes, it's 0232-566-788. And do you have a mobile number? Yes, 07834-889-772. That's great, Mrs Stansfield. As I said, we may get in touch if we need any further information, but probably what you've told me is enough. Thanks for your time. No problem. I'm glad to have been of help. You will hear a conversation between an international student and the accommodation department. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 1 to 3. Hello, Accommodation Department. How can I help you? Uh, do you look after accommodation for international students? Yes, uh, we look after accommodation for all the students. Good. I hope you can help me then. I've only just been accepted onto a postgraduate course and I want to know if there is any accommodation available from this September. I know it's very short notice. Mm, yes, uh, it, it is rather late, but I'm sure we'll be able to find you something. Uh, first of all, can you give me your name and student number so that I can find you on the system? Sure. My name is Maria Teresa Gonzalez. Maria Teresa Gonzalez. Uh, how do you spell that? G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E Thank you. Got it. And your student number, please? S H U three zero zero. 715PG SHU 300715PG Ah, here you are. Department of Modern Languages. Yes, that's me. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 4 to 6. OK, now there are several options for postgraduate students. Firstly, there is the Trigon. Uh, this is a new block near to the station and not far from the main campus. Accommodation is what we call cluster accommodation. What does that mean? Uh, there's a small group of rooms, usually six, each with its own bathroom clustered around a lounge kitchen area which is shared. Oh, I see. That sounds good. They are very popular. Uh, the price for these is £99 per week, and we do have some availability left. However, for postgraduate students, there are other options. And what are they? 
Uh, there's another apartment block called the Cube, located near the west gate of the campus. Accommodation there is in one or two bedroom self-contained flats. So the Cube is self-contained. How does that work? Well, basically, they're just like ordinary apartments. Each apartment has one or two study bedrooms with ensuite bathroom, a lounge, and a kitchen. And what is the price of those? Uh, for the one bedroom, it is a hundred and eighty pounds per week, and for the two bedroom, it is a hundred and ten pounds per week for each person. And can I choose who I share with? If you have a friend and you would like to share with them, of course, we can reserve a two-bedroom apartment for you both. Otherwise, you just have to share with whoever else is there.、Uh, obviously, it will be another woman.、Hmm. I will have to think about this. Do I have to make a decision now? No, but we don't have much accommodation left, so I can't guarantee that there will still be availability if you leave it too long. Yes, that's fair. I have a friend in the management department who might like to share. I will speak with her and get back to you this afternoon. Okay, fine.、Uh, do let us know as soon as you can. I will do. Thanks for all your help. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. Part one. Here, a student called Joanna, telling her friend about an arts festival, which is being held in the city where they are studying. First, you have some time to look at questions one and two. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully, and answer questions one and two. Hi, Joanna. Where have you been? Hi, Dave. I had to go into college to return a DVD I'd borrowed from the library. Oh, right. But while I was there, I got some information about the City Arts Festival that starts next week. Oh yeah, I saw a poster advertising it somewhere. Yeah, and I picked up this leaflet from the library. It gives you the website address. So as I was there, I logged on to get more information. Actually, although they've got the full program of events fixed now, you can't book online, which seems strange. There's a number to phone, though. Hmm. And are there student discounts? I guess so, but I didn't notice. Anyway, there are three things I'd like to see: an Italian film, a rock concert, and an art exhibition. Oh. <laughs> The exhibition's free, and you don't need to book, so I'll definitely go to that. But I'm going to get tickets for the film in case they sell out.、Mm, good idea. You can always buy concert tickets at the door because that's in a really big hall. Right. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to read questions three to ten. Now listen, and answer questions three to ten. So, when does the festival actually start? Well, it's usually held the first week of October, but it's earlier this year for some reason. The opening night is September the twentieth, and events go on till the end of the month. Hmm. 
And have you got that phone number? Yeah, it's here. Uh, look, it's o nine six seven double nine o double seven six. Okay, I'll write it down. O nine six seven double nine o double seven six. Thanks. I thought the local council made a profit from the festival, but it says here that there's a commercial sponsor. It's a local bank. I didn't know that. Neither did I. What other events have they got on? Um, as well as the art exhibitions and stuff that's open every day, there are special events each day. Like on Monday, there's a musical in the city hall.、Uh. That's only three pounds sixty-five for students. Hmm. I think I'll give that a miss. I've got football training on Mondays, but I'm free on Wednesday. There's a jazz band on then, and that's only two pounds fifty for students. Sounds good. Is that in the city hall too? We could go. Well, I'm busy actually, but it's at the sports centre if you're interested. Oh, right. Thursday's the cheapest event, only one pound twenty-five for students, and it's on in the library. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Probably the college choir. <laughs> Actually, no, they've not been asked. Apparently, oh, no, it's a poetry evening. Hmm, isn't there any modern dance on anywhere? On Friday, that's at the college. It's quite expensive, though, fifteen pounds for adults and twelve pounds seventy-five for students. Oh, yes, that is a lot. If I'm going to spend that much, I'd prefer to go out on Saturday. Yeah, me too. But on Saturday night, there isn't live music or a party or anything, just the fireworks in the city park, and that's only one pound fifty. Yeah, that'd be good. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions eleven to seventeen. Hello, and thanks everyone for coming here today. I know it's always a bit stressful going for a job interview, but it's best to be prepared. For any of you who may not know me, my name is Fiona Ogilvie, and my job is to offer guidance and support for students with special needs. Now. You wouldn't be here today if you weren't interested in finding a job in the holidays. So let's get down to it and see what things you need to be looking out for. Most of you, I hope, will be applying for jobs with the companies that have been recommended by the university. The reason for this is that we here at the university already know these companies and have established good working relationships with them. I've also been to visit all of them and checked out the facilities they have to offer. You really need to make informed choices when you're looking for a job, and make sure you know before you even get to the interview stage that your needs will be met. But I know that some of you are applying for jobs independently, 
and have looked at companies outside the university recommended list. So for you, it's best to plan ahead and be aware of what it is you may need while you're working. Things that you need to check when you go for an interview are: Are there enough toilet facilities, and are these easily accessible? Also, you want to check that all the public areas inside the building are barrier-free, so you can get direct access to these public spaces whenever you need to. And ask about ramps into the building, so you know how many there are and where they are located. These kinds of things are so much more difficult to sort out when you've started work, as they take time. But ramps are an absolute must, so please make sure you know where they are. Another thing you must make sure of is that the lifts have the correct lowered control panels. Ask if all the lifts have this facility, or if it's only certain ones. Now, something I think that is often overlooked is working hours. What you want to make sure of is that you get flexi time. This basically means that your working hours are flexible, and you can clock on and clock off in times that suit you, within reason, of course. Most companies do recognise that it takes much longer for someone in a wheelchair to get on and off buses and trains. Public transport can take that much longer, so you need to be organised and prepared. And for those of you lucky enough to own a car. Check how many disability parking spaces are available. Remember that it's your right to have a disabled parking space. These also need to be near enough to a wheelchair accessible entrance or ramp. Okay, are there any questions before we move on? Part one. Going to hear a conversation between an agent and Scott. First. You have some time to look at questions one to five. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Howdy! What can I do for you? I'm here to ship some things back to China. Okay, we can do that. Shipping things back, eh? Have you lived there before? Yeah, I lived there for three years and came back two years ago. Now I'm going back to start my own business. Really? Did you ship things with us last time? No, I used a Chinese shipping agency. Well, I'll just let you know that rates have changed recently, so I don't know if they'll be comparable to what you paid before. It doesn't matter to me. My company's paying for it. Aha!、Uh -huh. Then it's nothing off your skin, right? Okay. I'll need your name and where you need to go to pick up the items to be shipped. My name is Scott Linder, L I N D E R, and I live in upstate New York, Saratoga Springs. Oh, sure. I know that place. I go to the races there. Great town. What's the zip there again? Double seven o four two five, and the street address is four one two. West Lake Road. Double seven o four two five West Lake. Got it. And how big of a container are you going to be looking for? Well, I didn't have a container last time, and I don't think I'll need one this time. I think that I'll have about six cubic meters. We can get a subsection of a container then. How big is that? It's two meters wide and three meters long. Two meters high, right? Yes, sir. Now look at questions six to ten. As the talk continues, answer questions six to ten. And for customs, I need to know what sort of items will you be shipping? Mostly furniture, but we'll also have quite a few boxes of books too. Any clothing? Nope, but we'll have some bicycles and wood that we use for a loft bed. 
Be careful with those bicycles. I hear bicycle theft is a big problem in China. Not if you know how to secure your bikes and where to store them. Well, good luck. How valuable do you want me to list the entire shipment as being? Let's say about three and a half thousand dollars. Great. Now you'll also have to go over to the customs department to check with them about shipping the wood over to China. I know there are concerns about termites, bugs, etc. No problem. It's the same wood I brought over from China last time. Then you should be okay. It's just a formality. And last of all, where would you like the shipment to be delivered? Well, I will live in Beijing, but let's ship it to Tianjin. My company will pick it up there. That's all right then. Have a nice trip. Thanks for your help. Part one. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Hello. I wonder if you could help me. I am interested in enrolling in your MBA program. Could you give me some information, please? Yes, of course. I'll take a few details first of all, and I'll give you a copy of our prospectus. Oh, that's okay. I already have one here. I've been researching the MBA courses in the local area, so I already have lots of course information. That's great. Okay. So first of all, can you tell me your name, please? Yes, of course. It's Anne Horbury. Horbury is that H A W B E R R Y? Yes, that's right. Okay, and what's your date of birth, Miss Horbury? The twenty second of May, nineteen eighty one. That's great. And you were born in the UK? Yes, I was. All right. Can you give me some contact details, please? Sure. My address is twenty six Simon Place in Brighton, and my telephone number is o one nine o three. Seven one four seven two one. Sorry, can you tell me your contact number once again? Yes, it's o one nine o three seven one four seven two one. Okay, great. And do you have a mobile phone number? No, I don't. Is it important? No, that's okay. I'll just write it on your form. No mobile phone. Now, just a few additional questions. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Are you working or studying anywhere else at the moment? Yes, I'm working for Lloyd Enterprise in the city as a secretary, and I'm also attending a computer course part time in the evenings. Great. So, can you give me some details about your educational background? We need to make sure that your qualifications match the entry requirements. Yes. I completed a business degree a year ago. I've been working since my graduation, but the job market is very competitive these days. So I'd like to do some postgraduate study now. Okay, that sounds fine. Your degree is relevant, and it's good that you have some work experience too. I do need to warn you, though, that our MBA program is extremely popular and gets full quickly. So, would you be interested in applying for any alternative courses if your application is not successful this time? Well, my first choice would, of course, be the MBA. But yes, I've had a good look through your prospectus, and I would also be interested in the international marketing course. That's great. It's always a good idea to keep your options open just in case. Finally, can you tell me where you learned about our courses here? Actually, my cousin studied the MBA course two years ago, and she recommended it to me. Okay, well, thank you for coming in today. I will pass your details on to our admissions department. They should contact you this week with a formal application form, and they usually invite MBA candidates to come in for an interview. Okay, well, thanks for your time. No problem. 
Good luck with your application. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part one. You are going to hear a conversation between Don and a rental agent. He hopes that his apartment problems can be solved. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. We shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Good morning. I am a rental agency. How can I help? Oh, hello. I'm ringing about some problems I'm having with my apartment. Yes, of course. If I can just get a few details first. What's your name? Don Chester. How do you spell that? C H E S T E R. Okay, and the address? Apartment four, eighteen Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane, and that's in. In Newbridge. Oh yes, I know the one. Could I ask how long is the lease? It's for a year. And you moved in on. Last week, on twenty fourth May. Good, thanks. Now, what are the problems you found? Well, nothing too serious, you know, but a few things that have been building up over a few days. Yes, of course. Well, the first thing is the fridge. The seal on the door is decayed, and we have a small child and need to keep milk cool, so we need to get that done straight away. Okay, that's the fridge for immediate repair. And then there's a little problem with the gas water heater. Uh huh. The switch is broken. Right. It's not serious, and we can still use it. But if you can send somebody over in the next couple of weeks or so, that'd be great. Okay, I've got that. Then we're worried about the front windows. Are they broken? No, but there are no blinds on them, and you know, with privacy these days. And when would you like those done? Oh, it's not really urgent, but there are only thin curtains on the windows, and people are walking past. Yes, we'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions seven to ten. Now listen and answer questions seven to ten. There are only thin curtains on the windows, and people are walking past. Yes, we'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. And then there's the front door lock. It's getting quite annoying. It often jams, and we sometimes have to fiddle with it for minutes before we can get in the apartment. I'd really like to get that fixed up right away. That's no problem. And then the last thing is the shower curtain. It's torn. Oh right, we can get a new one and have it to you in the next week, if that's all right with you. Yes, that's okay. Anything else? No, that's all. Okay, fine. What we'll do now is get someone over to you this afternoon if you're home. Well, I'll be out for a short while. Okay. Tell us your preferred times. Well, the best time is about two o'clock. I'd have to check that with him. And if he can't get there then, what would be your second preference? Oh, any time up to six p.m. would be fine. Okay, I've got that. Great. Thanks very much. That's fine. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part one. Megan and Ken are deciding how they will spend the evening. You have some time to look at questions one to seven now.
Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, Megan speaking. Hello, Megan. Hello, Ken. I'm glad you called. Thomas asked me to give you his telephone number. Is that his office number or his home number? I can give you both. His new home number is nine four five two three four five six. Would you like his office number? I think I have it. Does nine seven three one four three two two sound right? That's it. But the home number is nine four five two three four five six. He moved in last week. Good. I've got that. Now, what would you like to do? Well, I'd like to go dancing, but Jane's hurt her ankle, so she'd rather not. That's a pity. I guess it means she doesn't want to play tennis either. That's right. She says it's okay to go bowling if we don't expect her to do well. Okay, let's do it. I guess we can go dancing some other time. Well, I booked us some time at the bowling alley of Entertainment City. Do you know it? Is it on Smith Street, down near the university? That's right. It's on the corner of Smith Street and Bridge Road. What time did you book for? The first booking I could get was eight o'clock. Okay, it's seven now. What do you want to do first? Well, I think we should leave now. We can meet at the bowling alley. I can't be that quick. I have to call Thomas to start with, and I need to get changed. Okay, I think I'll leave in ten minutes and meet you in there. That makes sense. I'll take my car, so I'll be quite quick. I'll be out of here in half an hour. Okay. You're so lucky to have a car; you can get around so easily. Well, yes, and no. I often spend ages driving around trying to find a park. The traffic can be very bad. Well, that won't be a problem for me because I'll take the bus. It goes right past my door, and I'll have plenty of time. Sounds good. Who else is coming? I think nearly everyone from the afternoon class will be there. Which class? The big maths class or the afternoon tutorial? The maths class. What's more, we get a concession for large numbers. That's good. I'm trying to keep my expenses down this month. So am I. I expect tonight will cost about twenty dollars. You must be good with money. I expect it to come to hmm, nearly forty dollars. So how are you going to manage that? Well, the bus is cheap, and if I come home early, I won't have time to spend too much. In any case, I have to be up early tomorrow morning, so I'd really better try to get home by about eleven. That reminds me, I have to phone the taxi company for my mother. Goodbye, Megan. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Ken. Ken calls the taxi company. First, look at questions eight and. Thank you for calling Acme Cabs. Please follow the instructions on the tape. If you wish to order a cab now, press one. If you have placed an order previously, press two. If you wish to make an advance order, press three. Please be ready to tell us your street number and name. If you wish to speak to the radio room supervisor, press four. If you want to inquire about lost property, press five. If you want to order a taxi equipped to carry wheelchairs, press six. Your call is very important. Please stay on the line for the next available order taker. Hello, 
I think I left something in one of your cabs on Thursday. It was a brown paper package with an address written on it in green ink. Has anyone handed it in? That is the end of part one. Part one. Jack is on his way to Margaret's house party. He is phoning her for directions. First, you will have some time to look at questions one to five. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Jack has got lost on his way to Margaret's party. He is phoning her for directions. Hello, is that Margaret? Yes. Who's speaking? Margaret, it's Jack. I think I'm lost. I can't see a signpost. And... Jack, so where are you now? Well, I'm a bit confused about the directions, but I'm at a T junction. What can you see around you? I can see a pub on the corner. Can you see the name of the pub? Wait a minute. Let me see. It's hard to see in the dark. Yes, I can read it now. It's called the Lion's、mm, Head. Ah,、oh, the Lion's Head. Okay. Well, then you're not too far away. Go straight ahead through the traffic lights to the next T junction. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you say? I said, just go through to the next T junction. Okay. Now what? Well, there's a park in front of you, and a large two-story building on the corner. Ah,、uh, yes, I can see them. Okay. So now turn left. Hang on, you're coming up the street, so you'll have to turn right. Okay, got it. What's the name of your street? It's Wesley Street. W E S L E Y, number seventy. Where the fifth house on the left, you should see a red letter box and some bushes in front of the house. Okay, fifth house number seventy. I should be there soon. Am I late for the party? It sounds like things are happening there. No, it's only just started. That's good. I should be there in the next ten minutes. See you soon. Jack hangs up and walks on. Seven minutes later, he calls Margaret again, as he still can't find the house. You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. As you listen, answer questions six to ten. Speaking. Hi, Margaret. It's Jack again. Sorry to bother you. Listen, would you mind doing me a favour? Of course. What? Could you tell Mike I have got his camera? I've tried to send him a text message, but it's not going through. Oh, he's not here yet. Oh dear. He said he'd be there early. He might be lost too. Okay, I'll call him. What's his number? O four eight two, five six three three seven nine. Ah, so that's O four eight five. No, no, o four eight two, five six three three seven nine. Okay, I'll call him right away. But where are you now? Well, I'm in your street, but I still can't find your house. I can't see the numbers very clearly, or a red letter box. It's pretty dark. I thought you said it was easy to find. Oh, okay. Wait there. I'll come outside and get you. All right then, and don't worry about calling Mike. I'll try to call him now. Hang on, there's someone coming down the street. It looks like Mike. Oh, and I can see the letterbox now. It was hidden behind a bush. See you soon.